I bought the car right before my son was born because I thought it was the last toy I would be able to buy. Um, at that time, I really liked the cars from the 60s. There was many choices then. In my opinion, uh, the Ferrari Lusso is probably one of the prettiest Ferraris ever built, either from the 60s or ever. And I've always had a strong fascination on how proportional the car is, how organic the shape is, and it's really a classic Ferrari front engine 250 car. That's why I bought it. Uh, I bought it because at that time I had a good year in business. The two choices I can afford was a Ferrari Lusso or a Daytona. Uh, I thought because the Lusos were more rare, being that there's 350 of them ever made, it'd be harder to find another one when I were able to buy another one as opposed to a Daytona. So that's why I chose the Lusso. The starting procedure of a Lusso is rather interesting. You get into the car, the ignition is on the left-hand side, you turn the ignition on, then you must prime the carburetor. By doing that, you turn on the electric fuel pump. As you turn on the electric fuel pump, it goes click, 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 click. That's telling you that the mechanical fuel pump is working. In a couple of minutes or so, the clicking sound is now longer and longer. That's telling you that the carburetors are filled up and the car is ready to start. It gives you a few moments to kind of gather your thought. It's, it's a ritual, it's a procedure. It's not to be hurried. It's kind of like foreplay. You just don't want it to start too fast. You want to kind of let it go through the courses and uh, you know, fall in love all over again. It's a great way to reacquaint yourself with the car when you start it. And I think those are the personalities that are lacking in modern cars today. The car is devoid of any distractions. There's no radio, there's no air conditioning, uh, there's no trip computers or any, anything like that. It's really just pure driving. I think they omit the radio because the soundtrack is probably better than any songs out there. three carburetors, red lines, about 7,000 RPM. I think it's one of the best soundtracks of any automobile engines that's produced. When I purchased the car, I had a couple of Ferraris to choose from, and uh, I chose the Lusso. Back when I bought the car, it was about the same money as buying a brand new Ferrari. Today, this car is probably worth four, maybe five new Ferraris. That's probably the reason why I decide to not drive in traffic and wake up early in the morning and go up my favorite mountain road or my favorite open highway or once in a while even just blast through downtown LA. This car loves to be revved up. The torque is not significant under 3,000 RPM. The car really comes alive from about 4 to 6,500 RPM. The car feels light. It feels like it's dancing. It feels happy. The car wails and screams so loud. Yeah, it demands attention whether you want to give it or not. The Ferrari Lusso was the last variation of the 250 platform. Several of the great cars previous to that, it was the 250 PF Cab, California Spider, 
the uh, 250 short wheelbase, and uh, to some, ultimately, the 250 GTO. The Lusso, it was kind of a street version of a short wheelbase. It had two comfortable seats. It had a luggage shelf in the back, so you can take on uh, long trips on the weekend. I think this is the perfect evolution to the end of the 250 chassis. It, very voluptuous, long hood, cam tail, um, a lot more of a greenhouse area compared to a 250 short wheelbase. It has the quarter windows, so there's less blind spots. The cabin's quieter compared to a GTO or short wheelbase. Um, it really is the uh, perfect sports car for the street, and hence the name Lusso, meaning luxury in Italian. I think it's very fitting for this car. What attracts my attention to the Lusso? Immediately the color, it's Ferrari red. Then I start uh, really looking at the shape of the car, how voluptuous it is. Um, these cars were really designed for beauty. It, it wasn't a committee design. It wasn't built to save money here or there. There wasn't any aerodynamic principles dictating the shape of the car. It was just made to look pretty by artisans that decided this is the way the car should look. Although the value of these cars are going up, I have to often reflect that these cars were made to be driven. I think it'd be a huge pity that these cars become quote unquote museum cars and never uh, be able to be used as what they're designed for. I think the best way to celebrate cars like this is to really drive it and enjoy it and to let other people see it. It's poetry in motion. <laughs>